Okay, we have our six sides cut. I've got some slip and a brush, and I've got a couple bottles of underglaze here that I'm just going to use as props to help me hold up the edges um, as we put together the first few. I found that it is usually easier to start with your largest side um, as your bottom and work from there. That doesn't necessarily mean this will be the bottom when you're finished, but it makes assembly easier if you work with the largest slab as the bottom piece. Now we're going to go ahead and scratch up the top edge all the way around. I'm using a fork here. You can use any number of scratching tools, a comb, the tooth rib. This happens to be what I had handy today. Scratching all the way around that inside edge because our side slabs are going to be set on top of this inside edge. Brush off the excess crumbs if necessary and I'm going to liberally spread slip over these score areas. Now you may notice the slip I'm working to, with today may be a little thicker than what you're used to. Um, when you're working with firm slabs, remember your slabs have already gone through a good majority of shrinkage. They're at their leather hard state. So if you can use a little thicker slip, that'll keep you from adding that much more extra moisture to those joints. What mommy doing? I'm trying to film, honey. Once again, spreading that slip liberally around those contours. You don't have to spread it with a brush, you can spread it with your fingers, you know, whatever is easiest. And I'm going to take first side, I'm going to scratch up the edge that's going to come in contact with that bottom slab. And I'm going to add slip liberally to that as well. And we're going to place it down but you'll notice I'm offsetting it just a, by the thickness of the slab. You see I didn't line it up directly with this edge here. The reason for that being is we're going to assemble these slabs in a pinwheel fashion. And then the extra that hangs off will be trimmed off later. But this ensures that we won't have divots on the corners where those slabs are joined together later as it shrinks. More slip. You know, see, because I'm using a thicker slip, it's holding it upright a little better, but I'm going to go ahead and put one of these jars of underglaze here just to make sure. Brush that inside seam really good. The slip to make sure that's that slip is really good and pushed in there. And then we'll get our next side. And oops, I got that one a little tall, so I'm going to have to go back and trim him down. Mark him. Sometimes happens as you're working on your box, you may find that you go to put it together and your measurements may not have been exact, or as you were thinking about it, how tall you were going to make things, how big you were going to make things, um, plans change due to slab size. That's fine. You just trim it down and go on. 
So since I know both sides are going to need to be trimmed the same, I'm going to go ahead and trim them both. And I'm going to save these extra pieces for when I go to do the flange. Now that should fit just fine right there. Painting it real liberally with that slip. And in this case, this edge is going to join right here on this inside. So we've got to make sure that this is really well scratched and scored. Remember we're assembling it in pinwheel fashion. So I've got a little bit of overhang here which is hard to see at the moment, but I'll turn it so you can see that. And you're working with firm slabs, so you can use a good amount of pressure. Use that to your advantage. You see we have our slip oozing out of the corners that seam there. That's exactly what we want. Okay. So I'll rotate this a little bit. You can see I've left my quarter of an inch hang there. Scratch it. this section here, get our slip added, see where this is going to fit, scratch up our edges, that's this edge that needs to be scratched. Make sure you really get some good grooves in there when you're scratching and scoring. That will ensure that those pieces will really sit together well. Don't be afraid of using too much slip. You can always clean up the extra slip later. But if you don't have enough, you'll be dealing with shrinkage problems and cracking for the rest of the assembly. Once again, offsetting that slab just enough so that we can fit that next slab on there. Making sure all those edges are pressed together really well. Now at this point, because the other slabs are holding it up, I don't need to use the underglaze bottle as a prop there any longer. Let's see our slip is oozing out of the cracks rather well. Now while we've got the inside of the box here showing, I want to show you um, how to smooth up the inside of this. I really want you to paint a good amount of slip in that crack, really force that slip in that crack because we don't want any, any cracks along the inside. And in a minute, we're actually going to force a coil in there as well to help keep that shrinking to a minimum. Okay. Scratching up all the edges where this last slab will meet. Measuring it in there, seeing where I need to scratch. Okay. 